Welcome to Math 31. This is a continuation of Lesson 2, Trig Review, looking at some proofs with uh, the identities that we've uh, covered so far. So number 5, actually, is the one we want to look at. Sine x over sine 2x is equal to secant x over 2. Now, the idea generally with identities is that we work with the messier side, the dirtier side, try to make it equal to the, to the um, simpler side. Sometimes it's not easy to see which one is which. A case like this, though, when we see sine 2x, any time you run into that in an identity problem, that you should be thinking double angle identity. It's really all you can do. So I'll take this. Sine x just goes down with it. And then sine 2x would be equal to 2 sine x cos x. Now this one turns into a pretty simple identity once you make the original substitution. Because then when you divide up by the sine x top and bottom, we get 1 over 2 cos x. Now the thing of it is, um, it's certainly OK to take the right side and make a substitution with your secant into 1 over cos and then, and then simplify it. That's no problem. It doesn't really matter how you close the deal with this one. What I'm going to do, though, is I'll write this as 1 over 2. And this is not the fastest way, but it does it is tr correct. Um, write this as 1 over 2 times 1 over cos. And then this becomes 1 over 2. 1 over cos is secant. And there we have it. That's secant x over 2 is equal to secant x over 2. So it works out nicely. Pretty routine, but it does require some difference formulas, or, or um, double angle. Now this one's the same type of thing, but a little bit more complicated, because we have, uh, well, just a little bit more going on. Now the, the numerator, sine to x, and as always, pause me, go through it yourself, and check your answer. Good idea. So sine 2x gain a double angle. This becomes 2 sine x cos x. And then the denominator, bit of a problem, because you've got 1 minus cos 2x. And if you take a look at your formula sheet, you'll know that 2x, cos 2x, can be expressed in three different ways. Cos squared x minus sine squared x, 2 cos squared x minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And the question is, which of those three do you use? Now, in fact, it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, any of them will lead you to the right place. But what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to convert this into the, I'm going to use the last one, the 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And the reason I'm, I'm taking that one, besides the fact I have some insider information on this, um, the reason other than that is the advantage with that method is it'll cancel the 1 out. And I'm thinking that's a good thing. So if I knew nothing else, I would choose this method because 1 minus 2 sine squared x will cancel that coefficient out. And the other ones do not. If you replace it with 2 cos squared x minus 1, the 1 minus negative 1 would give you a 2. So this is going to actually get, get me down to just one term, which I view as being a positive thing. So 2 sine x cos x over top. Well, this is 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x. So the, the ones are gone, and we get 2 sine squared x. And now when we divide out by the 2 and by the sine x, we get cos x left on top over sine x, and that is cotangent x equal to cotangent x. So we did it. The left side is equal to the right side. A little bit more complicated, but not too bad. Number seven. Now this one's starting to look uh, like it could be a problem. Kind of an interesting one. I'm going to leave the right side alone entirely and just work with the left side. It, um, we, we know where to go with this because we have cos 2x and sine 2x. question, of course, is first off, what version of the identity of cos 2x do we select? And um, this one makes a little bit, there's a little more logic to my choice. Because I've got that straggler plus cos x on top, I'm thinking that I should take that cos 2x and use the version of it that converts it into cosine because then I'm going to have like terms. If I'm, if I'm wrong, if I do use the, 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 another version, um, it's not 
the end of the world. It just is going to involve one extra substitution. So it's important to remember that in most cases, if you don't make the most direct choice, it's not the end of the world. If your algebra is, is strong, you'll find a way to get to the right place. So I will make that substitution. I'll write this as 2 cos squared x plus cos x. Oops, I'm missing a term, of course. Minus 1 plus cos x goes in there. And then um, sine 2x has to be 2 sine x cos x minus sine x. Now I'll clean this one up in the next step. But you'll also be aware by staring at this one that we have a quadratic. If we put it in descending order, plus cos x minus 1. And then the denominator 2 sine x cos x minus sine x. And if off to the side, you don't need to write it like this, but if you took a look at that numerator and thought of cos in terms of a, this becomes 2a squared plus a minus 1, which is a quadratic which is very factorable. 2a and a, 1 and 1, and then the, um, the um, 2a minus 1 and a plus 1. If you foil them together, you're going to get um, 2a squared plus a minus 1. So in the terms of cosine, this would factor into 2 cos x take away 1 multiplied by cos x plus 1. And then that denominator, by factoring out a sine x, will get 2 cos x minus 1. And then through division, these go away, and we get cos x plus 1 over sine x, which is in fact equal to the right side, cos x plus 1 over sine x. So that one works out well. A little bit more algebra involved. Now, um, first look at some of the sum difference formulas. And with these, you really don't need to think too hard. You simply need to look at the expression and make a decision. Um, when you see cos x plus y, this is pretty clear that we need to use the cos a plus b formula, which is given. Always keep your formula sheet around. Don't force yourself to memorize these ones, although you probably will memorize some of these. This is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. So in terms of x and y, this is going to break into cosine of x times cosine y minus sine x sine y all over top of sine x times sine y. And I'm ignoring the right side of the expression. Now, this one can be solved a number of ways, but I'm going to advise you to split the fraction, meaning that that denominator belongs to both terms on the numerator. So you could write it as two individual fractions, which will lead us someplace. So this is cos x cos y over sine x sine y minus sine x sine y all over top of sine x sine y. Now we have to do it like that well in one form or the other. The big mistake that people make is that they want to cancel this sine x sine y on top with this sine x sine y in the denominator. And remember, you probably don't need to be reminded, but you cannot do that. That sine x sine y in the denominator belongs to both terms in the numerator. You just can't hack it out with one of the terms on top without taking it out of the other one. So don't do that. Um, and then anyways, if you go this far with it, it's pretty easy because this is going to be minus 1 there. And if you take a look at your cos x over sine x, that is going to be cotangent x. And then cos y over sine y 
is cotangent y. So cotangent x cotangent y minus 1, which lo and behold is what we have on the right side. So cotangent x cotangent y minus 1. So we did it. So when you see something in the form cos or sine a plus or minus b, don't think, make the substitution. And then number nine, I believe, is the last one that I've got on this one. Um, looks messy, but this is another example of where we want to be using the a plus b formulas. So I see cos of a minus b, and I see the sine of a plus b. So I use those two formulas. I have the formula sheet in front of me and see where it takes me. So cos a minus b is cos of pi over 6 times cos of x plus. So the cosine some difference formulas always have the sine changing. And then this is sine pi over 6 times sine x. And then go on with the sine one. And this becomes um, sine of a plus b is the sine of x times the cos of pi over 3 plus the way it's written in the formula sheet would be the sine of pi over 3. The order actually doesn't matter as long as you do both. Pi over 3 times cos of x. And all this is going to be over top of cosine x. Now this looks like it's a mess, but this is practice for exact values. The cosine of pi over 6 is, think of that as that could be 30 degrees. You could use your calculator as long as you make the conversion to, to uh, exact values. That's going to be root 3 over 2 cos x. And then the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. You need to be good at them for precisely for reasons like this. And then plus sine x times cos of pi over 3. Well, the cos of pi over 3 is 1 half. I'll put that in front. And then sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 cos x. All over top of cos x. And then um, taking a look at these, you'll see that you've got like terms. You've got the root 3 over 2 cos x plus root 3 over 2 cos x. Now that is, um, if you add them together, that's 2 root 3 over 2, which is just equal to square root 3 cos x. And then your 1 over 2 sine x plus 1 over 2 sine x is 2 over 2 sine x, which is just sine x. Then this is all over top of cos x. And if we do what we did in the previous question, that is we split the fraction, we'll get root 3 cos x over cos x plus sine x over cos x. I'll just take this over to the side rather than use a lot of space. That will give me square root 3. The cos x is divide out. Sine over cos will give you 10x. And then this is equal to 10x plus root 3. So it works out. So that's the idea. And with these examples, you can get fairly good at, uh, at um, doing these proofs. But it takes a bit of practice. So make sure that you do as many as you can so it's really as muscle memory. And um, so that you can instinctively make good choices with your substitutions. Thank you for your time.